Hi, everyone. Bill Holton here from Field Trial Central, and this is Field Trial Central Live. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, just a little bit of housekeeping tonight. We are uh, once again being streamed live on Facebook, also live on YouTube. So uh, make sure to uh, share this to you know friends and and bird dog friends around the country and around the world, and uh, let's kind of build a following behind this show and uh, keep that going. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you click the bell on the bottom. That way you get a, a notice when we're going live again. And, uh, you know, make sure you like our, our uh, Facebook page, which I think most people have been that are watching this. Uh, but the, the real enjoyment tonight is we're being jo joined live with by Brian Gingrich. Uh, Brian Hello. is a uh, professional dog trainer, shooting dog trainer, uh, based out of, uh, I'm going to say, Illinois, New Mexico, and North Dakota. So, uh, Brian, right. thanks, thanks for joining us tonight. Oh, thanks for having me. I think this will make my uh, third interview uh, with Field Trial Central. I've done a couple in uh, North Dakota in my summer camp with Lance. Uh, I think this is my first time with you here in New Mexico. So I'm happy to be back. Uh, enjoy your guys' Facebook page. Uh, yeah, no, it's been great. You've been really uh, accommodating. I know Lance has been at a camp a couple times, and I know he's planning on coming back again this year. Um, so... Uh, give me a little bit of, uh, you know, give us a little background, uh, you know, who who Brian Gingrich is, wh how you got started in bird dogs, how you got started as a field trialer and, and as a professional. Sure. Um, really, it all goes back to my father. Um, my dad uh, grew up in <clears throat> Iowa and used to go pheasant hunting a lot as a child, uh, never had a dog. And uh, I always remember hearing him tell me stories about hunting without a dog and walking and how hard it was beating through the cover and trying to get birds up and then find them once you shot them. And uh, I was born in Iowa and he grew up in Iowa. Um, but when I was to his job, we moved a lot. And when I was younger, we lived in Florida and Pittsburgh. Uh, and there wasn't really a lot of hunting there. But when I was 12 years old, we moved back to Illinois. And uh, I remember one of the first things we did when we moved back was my dad said, I want to get a hunting dog. Um, and uh, I didn't know anything about it, but I was like, sounded good to me, a dog, you know. And uh, so it just started real innocent and with my dad going out and having fun. And uh, we started off just getting a Vishla and do it one, thinking we were going to do hunting. Um, and uh, we bought our dog from Jim Bush and uh, he got my dad and I into field trials, pushing us towards field trials. And uh, I've been doing it ever since, you know, since I was about 12 years old, going to field trials with my dad. Um, you know, when we first started uh, in field trials, you know, we it was back in the walking days. Uh, there, no one had horses. Everyone just pulled in in minivans and, and whatnot. And I remember uh, one time I went to a field trial in Iowa. You know, in our Vichelas, we were just getting started. You know, we were okay, but we weren't that great, you know. And uh, I remember pulling in to a field trial, and I saw a minivan pull in, and a guy got out and pulled out two short hairs. And I remember thinking as a 12-year-old, oh, we're screwed. You know, like, <laughs> we can't beat a short hair. Uh, so, uh, you know, I started with that um, and going to field trials. And I used to just watch my dad. My dad would run the dogs and my dad would, uh, I'd help him train, but my dad would run the dogs in the trials. And I remember a big thing for me was he would rent me a horse, but only for the braces where he ran a dog. So I would get to ride in the gallery and watch the dog and ride a horse. You know, when you're 12, 13 years old, this is pretty cool, you know. And, uh, and the rest of the braces, I didn't get a horse. So if I wanted to watch, I was walking. So I was a 12, 13-year-old kid that was out walking in the gallery. When I think back to that now, it just makes me laugh. But, uh, you know, that's how I got started in it. And it was just really a family thing, just me and my dad doing stuff with dogs. We both have a love for it. And uh, it's been really special. We still do it together. So I'm 46 now. So that's about 34 years uh, bird dogs and doing it with my dad. It's been pretty awesome. That is awesome. That's, it's really, you know, a testament to, uh, to how important it is or can be. We just never know, uh, when we take, uh, you know, one of our kids along with us to field trials, you know, that's kind of how, you know, when, when I was, uh, first starting to field trial, you know, if I didn't take kids with, I wasn't going, you know? And so, yeah. <laughs> so I, you know, I brought a, I brought a bunch of boys with me to field trials. They all kind of grew up in the game and, um, none of them have, have become professional dog trainers. Uh, but 
You know, yeah, they, that wasn't really planned. It just kind but, of organically happened. Absolutely, uh, but you know, yeah, that's that's how it happened, though. You know, because you were there, and and you know, they've they've all become you know people that have have a, a love for the outdoors, and and yeah, you, know, you just don't know. So bring those kids with. You know, we we're always looking at ways to grow this sport. There's there's a pretty I love good. It when I see young kids out there, uh, and it's pretty cool. You know, it reminds me of myself, and I just think it's neat. I always try to be friendly with them, and you know, encourage them. Uh, so, yeah, it's been I've been doing it a lot of years. It makes me feel even older than I feel when I say how many years I've been hanging out with bird dogs. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it's it the the really interesting thing is obviously you guys started with Vishalas, um, and and yep. have continued with Vishalas you know, for a really long time. I know you've, you know, you've got some white dogs and we will talk about that also, but you know, you've pretty much, is that the, the truth that you've kind of just stayed the course uh, in the yeah, Vichla? I've always had I, my first dog. When I lived in Florida as a kid, we had a German short, a uh, German shepherd, just a pet, you know, but when, as soon as we got to Illinois, uh, we went to get a bird dog and I know my dad thought he was going to get a short hair. Uh, and one of the guys he went and talked to at work about it was like, you don't want a short hair. Uh, not to say anything bad about short hairs, but that's just what they said. And he's like, guys, like you want a Vishla? Uh, and my dad, you know, he knew Jim Bush, who had a litter that was ready at the time. And uh, so it was, that was a real innocent thing too. You know, it's kind of a convenience thing, but we just fell in love with the breed. Um, they're very personable dogs. You know, they really like um, their people. They really want to please you, and they're really friendly in the house. Um, and I, I mean, some of the things I also like about them is they're really fast too. The ground race is really quick. Um, our style has gotten better and better and our run has gotten better and better. I mean, the breed is just going uphill big time since when I was a kid, like I said, when, if I saw a short hair in the parking lot, I didn't even have to know who the handler was or anything. I was like, we're in trouble. Uh, yep. now our breed has come a long ways and I've just, I've always had them. And, uh, that's how it got started in the AK. You know, I started going on a few trials as a pro competing at the AKC weekend level. Um, and it just all started with Vishlas. I've had some short hairs and some limes and a setter and had a few other breeds and some pointers, but it's been primarily Vishlas, um, you know, as, uh, especially for my family owning. And as a pro, it's been a lot of Vishlas so far, uh, my 10 years as a pro. Yeah. So you've been a pro for 10 years now. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Awesome. I think awesome. I'm like in my 11th year now, uh, like fall of 2009, maybe it's more, uh, right. but like 11 years. Yep. Yeah. Well, it's good. It's a, yeah, that's, it's a, it's a great way to make a living. It's a tough way to make a living at times. And, and, uh, you know, but it's, it's surely something to, you know, to behold when you can, you know, spend your, your time being your own boss and, and run around the country with bird dogs and horses oh. and, I feel like I get paid to travel around the country and play with dogs and horses. Yep. And the places I go are so incredibly beautiful. You know, you sit back and circle or when I was in American Falls or up in Payette, Idaho, or in Utah or Oregon, you know, these places, you just sit back and you look at your scenery around you and uh, it's amazing. You know, uh, it's really amazing. I just love it. Um, yeah. I couldn't be happier doing what I'm doing right now. Yeah, um, I can believe that. I can believe that. So tell us a little bit about your schedule. I, I know uh, right now you're in New Mexico, which is uh, probably not the normal for this time of the year for you. Um, but, you know, what's, what's your schedule look like? Um, typically, you know, well, I have a summer camp. I go to North Dakota. Uh, I train northeast of Minot, um, about 20 miles from the Canadian border, kind of close to where Randy Anderson trains. Uh, we run into, I've ran into him. I've seen him out in the fields a few times. Um, and so I'm there and then I campaign all fall. Uh, and like, for instance, this fall, um, I I've got, uh, some Vishla championships. Uh, there's like two or three Vishla championships I go to in the fall, but that leaves the whole rest of the season open, uh, for other events. And, uh, I, I've, um, been going to more and more American field open shooting dog championships and, uh, for example, Circle Montana, that is like my favorite place to run. I've been going there for three years, four years now, both spring and fall. Um, I've been to American Falls, which I love, is now permanently on my schedule in Idaho. I run in Payette. Uh, I get to Grove Spring, Missouri, run there in Grove Spring a couple times. Uh, this winter, 
on my way back to New Mexico in November, I plan to stop and run in the Texas Open Shooting Dog Championship in the Lone Star Classic. They have a double event that runs back to back. Um, and then generally from like November till end of February-ish, I'm in New Mexico. I've got a ranch, uh, it's three sections, and it's just about 100 miles west of Albuquerque. And uh, so I train there uh, through November to through March. And uh, now it's gonna offer me the ability to be, kind of use that as a hub to get out and hit some more of these West Coast shooting dog events. Um, in California, I know in the end of January, they've got a couple events. Um, I've run in the Arizona Open Shooting Dog Championship in Kingman the last couple of years. That, those grounds, I guess they're losing due to some housing development. Um, so we'll figure out what happens with that. But um, my plan for the future is, you know, being in New Mexico in the winter time is to hopefully get out and hit some of these West Coast events. Um, and then in the spring, field trialing. You know, it's like my whole life is built around this. Um, it's train in North Dakota, train in New Mexico, and compete the rest of the year. Um, I live in my horse trailer at least half the year. Uh, and I'm, I mean, I've got the perfect life for it. I'm single. I have no kids. Uh, I mean, my whole life is built around these bird dogs. Yeah, um, no, that's awesome. It. So it's, yeah. It's fun. I love yeah, that's it. awesome. That's a good plan. I think, I think you've got, a, I think that's a great idea. And, and I know you've, you, you know, you've built a lot of success with the, with the red dogs. Um, we should probably talk a little bit about some of them. You know, the first one, I guess I would bring up is guy. Uh, that's a special sure. one. Yeah obviously oh, yeah. you know tell tell us a little bit about guy um okay well guy is owned by ron chenoweth and denise chenoweth um they live in illinois soon to be relocating to paducah kentucky um and guy is also co-owned by my father um i got guy when he was about 18 months old um and i watched him run as a derby and saw a ton of potential and uh thankfully ron called me and said he wanted to send him to me and have me try to get him broke and develop them and he has just turned out to be an incredible animal um in many ways not only in training um you know i go to north dakota every summer i keep track of finds i like to know you know who was the best bird finder we call dan and i i go to the summer camp with dan demand real short here bro we'd like to call our best dogs bird finders we make sure every brace we run we've got at least one bird finder out there and uh guy I think for seven years in a row going to my summer camp was the number one bird finder. Um, he just, he trains awesome. He competes awesome. Uh, he's honest. He loves to stand on point. And also he just breeds. He throws great dogs. All of my, most of my, all, but almost all of my best Vishlas that are coming up are all descendants of Guy. Um, I have two sons of guys that are both national champions. Um, on my string right now. Um, so, I mean, to me, it's just a whole package. And the dog has won five national championships, uh, two, th two American field with me in the Open, two AKC national championship opens with me, and one with Ron, the owner, one amateur. And he won uh, 10 hour championships and uh, three time runner up, field champion. Um, you know, and just kind of to sum up, guy, in his last season running with me, he's retired now, but in his last season running with me, he was at eight-hour championships. And, you know, our goal had always been to try to get to 10. You know, we just wanted to see him get to double digits. And we had a couple of the Vichla events got canceled due to weather and this and that. And I ended up only having two championships to run in that whole season. And it was the Arizona Open Shooting Dog Championship in Kingman, Arizona. And the Big Sky Open Shooting Dog Championship in Circle, Montana. And we laughed beforehand. We're like, you know, he's going to really have to get it done if he's going to get to 10. Uh, being the both of his only two championships this season are open championships. Well, he did it. He went and won both of them and got to 10 Nash 10 hour championships. Um, and I just love the dog to death. Uh, he was great in the house. Um, and I just see, you know, I have his sons, I have his grandsons. Um, and it's just, it's awesome. I can see the traits in him, and uh, that's a dog that he set my bar high. I'm going to be chasing that, that title for a long time uh, with any other dog I have, trying to get to five national championships in ten hours. Yeah, that that makes a that's a that's a pretty good thing to strive for, and he'll uh, he'll make it tough. But I we do have a a little bit of news. 
Well, Denise says the guy is here and he's listening. So Everybody. You do, <laughs> it's your turn to perform for guy. So, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's living a good life. Now I know Denise is taking good care of him. Uh, he spent a lot of time on the couch with me and in bed, you know, when my dogs win, uh, I kind of known for, uh, rewarding them with sleeping in the living quarters. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of photos after days after guy ran him laying in bed, with me getting his belly rub. And, uh, if any dog deserved to have a good retirement and have Denise rubbing his belly and loving on him, his guy. Ah, that's so, awesome. Great to hear. So tell me a little bit, some of the dogs you have in your string coming up for this, this season, uh, some of the broke okay, dogs. Um, well, I've got, you know, uh, probably my next most uh, successful dog is Red. Um, Red is owned by Mrs. Banger, Mrs. Pat Banger from Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Uh, Missouri, she says. And uh, um, Red is out of Guy, and he's a uh, two-time national champion. Um, and he's won both the American Field and the AKC uh, Vichla National Championship. Um, he's seven years old, and he's, like, right in his prime. He's just firing on all cylinders. And I can't wait to run him this fall with all the events I have. It's going to be a blast. Um, I've got uh, another dog uh, that's around the same age as Red. They're like two days apart, and her name is Bam Bam. Uh, Bam Bam's a two-time champion, four-time runner-up champion, field champion. Uh, and uh, she's a great dog. And actually, we're just breeding Red to Bam Bam right now. I got in their third breeding yesterday. I'm going to try for a fourth tomorrow. So we're really excited to see. Um, those are two of my top dogs to see what they can produce. Hopefully that's the next generation of Vishless coming up right there. Uh, I've got a uh, scout who is another son of uh, red. He's five years old. He's a national champion. Uh, he's a two time champion. Uh, I think four time runner up too. or he took runner up last fall at the Northwest Chucker shooting dog championship at Payette up at the Richardson's. Richardson's Ranch, that beautiful facility they have up there in Payette. Um, and so those are some of my broke, most successful dogs. I've got a couple of two-year-olds coming up that um, are doing, showing a lot of promise. One of them is named Toby, and he is uh, a son of Red, and uh, who's so Guy's his grandfather, Red's his father, and he's had a ton of success, and uh, he had a really nice showing at the Idaho Open Shooting Dog Championship last fall. Um, as in one of his first runs as a broke dog, got around clean. And the judges told me he was, in, they were looking at him. He didn't get a piece, but he was in the mix. So I take that as a real positive uh, with a young dog. And I have another young dog, a two-year-old uh, named Dutch, who's owned by Matt Rosner of uh, Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, and um, Dutch is out of guy. And he's another two-year-old that's got a ton of potential. I'm really excited for Toby and Dutch this summer. Uh, to go to my summer camp and just build, you know, they were, they're doing great, but another two months on the prairie. And uh, it's, I'm really looking forward to an exciting fall for both of them. And I've got a couple young dogs uh, that I'm breaking right now. Uh, also out a guy, I think you can see a trend kind of going here. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm the guy traveling advertisement, you know, for the breeding program out of guy, but uh, yeah, I've got these, these two dogs are litter mates, Remy and Rue. And they're both owned by the Zenuses, Julie and Jeff Zenus, who live in Michigan. And uh, those two dogs have done nothing but been great. Their whole juvenile had them since they were puppies. And they've been doing great. And I'm getting them broke right now. They're standing, watching pigeons fly away out of the grass. Um, I, my, my goal for them is uh, when I start running, I'm wild birds in North Dakota here at, in camp, that I can hold them to a broke dog standard all summer. And, you know, six weeks on the prairie being held to a broke dog standard, um, it should just be – Pretty, I'm excited. It should be an exciting time for them. And that's kind of the core. Uh, uh, oh, and I've got well, I've got a couple other dogs, too. Bill Stapleton has some dogs. I've got Nova. He's a young dog who's Toby and, and um, uh, Dutch's age. Uh, just beautiful 12 o'clock tail and run. Um, she was a wild one when she was young, but now as she's getting broke, it's all coming together. And, uh, and Bill Stapleton also has a couple dogs, Stone. Uh, who took a runner-up in the National Amateur Championship last year. And uh, his dog, Cinder, a female who just won our national championship this March, I broke. They'll both be coming to summer camp. Um, 
so that's kind of the meat of my string, I guess. Uh, I've got some puppies coming and some new dogs, but that's kind of the meat of, of what I'm working with right now. And Bill's got some pointers, some white dogs with you too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bill's got a really nice pointer. Um, we started him off at my winter camp last winter. He's out of, you may have heard of these dogs, uh, Bolt, uh, and that Sean Kinkler, I think he just set the record for the most championship wins. And it's out of Lance Schultz's dog, Rue. Um, right. So it's his Bolt Rue pup. And, man, he's just been awesome, just getting better and better. Uh, you know, he does the things I like to see in a dog. He is a, even as a young dog, he just looks up out front and sees you and just cues and goes forward, doesn't come back to you. He's just mature, runs much mature than his age, you know. Uh, and I've just, I've just been excited. I feel like the sky's the limit on him. And he's another one, too, coming to summer camp. Uh, I just can't wait to see. After watching what he did this winter, um, to see what he can learn to do on the prairie and learn to run on the prairie, which is different than my New Mexico, is uh, more like western, open, high desert plains, uh, really low cover where they got to really learn to stretch and punch and get out there. Whereas, you know, prairie, you've got more cover and you get more of a pattern, a quartering yeah. pattern like range. Um, it's just a little bit different. So he... I saw how well that he adjusted and ran to the high desert plains out uh, west. And now I can't wait to see what he learns to do on the prairie. Because ideally, I mean, that's really where I like to run. And what I'm really trying to develop is a big prairie shooting dog. You know, wild bird, prairie running type shooting dog, a western dog. That, you know, it's got some big punch to it and gets out and covers some ground. But that's what excites me. Um, and I think he's got to fit right in with all my other best dogs. So great. I'm really excited. I feel very fortunate to have such a great breeding uh, to work with, you know, and, and to get out and he will be at a lot of derbies this fall, coming to a field trial in a derby near you soon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, that's good to hear. So you got more, uh, more room for dogs at camp this year or are you, yeah. you looking yep. for, looking for some more to, to show up? So, yeah. And, uh, you know, some things I can talk about is um, a couple of things about, I can just, just talk about my camp a little bit. Um, I go with Dan DeMambro, who's a short hair pro, um, who's had a ton of success on the short hair world. Um, I think if you know anything about short hairs, you know what Dan has done. Um, and that camp was started by John Steger, who was a short hair pro for years and had hundreds of championship wins. Um, he always swore that this is where his champions were made. And I was fortunate enough that when John got sick, I was able to come in and fill, take over for him and uh, to see what it's done for my dogs and Dan's watch Dan's dogs develop over the years. Uh, it's amazing. You know, we have a camp with a house and a bunch of kennels uh, where we, where we stay at. And then every morning we load up a training trailer full of dogs and horses and we head out, you know, we've got courses anywhere from five minutes away to 35 minutes away. We kind of break our, our, running up into, we call them quadrants. You know, I have a Northwest, Northeast, Southwest, Southeast, and each quadrant has got at least five courses in it. Um, and so we'll head to one quadrant for the day and run all those courses. And what that allows with so many courses is that when you rotate from quadrant to quadrant, that gives every course at least three days rest before we return to it, which from my experience, the birds will stay. Yeah. You're not hitting them too hard if they're leaving. So, you know, it's kind of fun for me when I have clients come at the end of camp, I can look just like a psychic. I can be riding along and go, I'm, I, I feel birds. I'm predicting in the next couple hundred yards, we'll get into a covey of four or five birds. And then it happens and they look at me like, how do you know? It's well, because they've been there all summer. You know, there's some edge, some CRP along the edge of an alfalfa field. And every time we go down that edge, uh, you know, a half a section long or whatever it is, they're there. Um, yeah. So, you know, and, and well, another thing I love about it is that, with so many courses, I think last summer we were running 35 or maybe 40 hour courses total we had. And that's the other thing. We train hours. We run hour courses off horseback. All training I do is off horseback. Um, and But with all those courses, if I plan it right, and generally I do pretty good about this, a lot of those dogs never really run the same course twice the whole summer. So you talk about um, getting the versatility. They're, it's not like they're running the same course going from spot to spot. It's They learn to hunt. They learn to apply themselves. And every course, one of the things I also love about North Dakota is all the different types of cover. You know, it's not like 
every hour I run, I'm running through two or three different types of cover. I'll have some crop fields, I'll have some alfalfa, I'll have some CRP, some pasture land. It really forces the dogs to adapt and adjust to the different cover. Um, and it also really helped represent a field trial because, you know, we're loading them up in a trailer, we're taking them out down the road, we're pulling them out. You've got two handlers, me and Dan. You've got multiple dogs on the ground competing. Um, it's it's as close as you can get to a field trial in training. Um, right. And, I, you know, I've just seen what my dogs have learned to do by going to North Dakota and now New Mexico. It's made them just totally different animals. If I stayed in Illinois and just trained at my 140-acre farm in Illinois, my dogs wouldn't run anything like what they do now. You know, it's you got to know what you're doing training, but you also got to get them to the right spots to bring it out of them. And I, I think, you know, the results um, that have, you can see from my dogs and Dan's dogs, um, I think the proof's in the pudding there. And if you see what John Steger did with his dogs before us, um, it those – there's, there's a reason why so many pros go up and run on the prairies and wild birds. Um, it's the real deal. Um, yeah, and, you absolutely. Know, got, I think I've got 46. We're, we're almost to 50 now. We're at 46 American Field Championships uh, right now. And I've got eight. With my Vishlas, we're at eight open championships. I think three champions and five runner-ups. Two more, and we'll be at double digits. Um, so these are, like, some of my goals I'm chasing after. Uh and, um, you know, and as far as my spots at camp, you know, I have, I take mid twenties. I've never had more than 30 dogs. And, you know, that's something I just want to emphasize for people. I know some pros take a lot more dogs. Um, I take, you know, 24 to 26 ish in there. Um, and, and also I do all the training. Um, it's me. Um, if you yeah. send your dog, I'm going to be the guy training your dog. Uh, so, um, and what ideally, you know, I started with doing the AKC weekend trials and I've had a lot of success at that. Um, but I, honestly, I feel like my best dogs are starting to outgrow that. So, you know, um, I have dogs, my best dogs, when they break away, if they don't have a bird in the first couple minutes, they're not coming back looking for me. They're going until they find a bird. Well, I, I can't tell you how often I have my first find. I don't see my dog. They break away and I find them at 10 minutes pointed. Well, at the AKC weekend trial, I'm gone too long, you know, right. uh, timed out. Uh, I feel like in some of those, if I don't, with my best dogs, if I don't have three or four or five fines, I'm going to get timed out. Um, and so, you know, and like I said, that breaking away 10 minutes from pointed in an hour championship, you're talking, you're off to a start here, you know? Right. Uh, and so I'm, I just, I've just learned over the years that I just enjoy the uh, hour more. I think it's a better test of a dog. And I think you find better courses and better grounds. Um, and so I'm looking to go more and more towards the hour uh, shooting dog championships. So I'm really looking to find owners that want to compete at that level, you know, who want to win and not just compete, but win. I like to win. I'm competitive. They want to win at the hour American field shooting dog championship level. Then I'm your guy. Uh, that's what I'm looking to do. Um, <laughs> Uh, and that's what I'm hoping to add, you know, if that's what you're into then right. uh, we need to talk. Um, so that's, that's where I'm headed. Uh, and I think, you know, I've been doing this for 10 years. Uh, I've got two camps, the trailer, my whole life is set up for this. I think I'm ready to, 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 to take it to the higher level. And, you know, from talking to some people and just being, I've been dabbling my feet in that world and visiting with people. It seems like, you know, on the western, in the western zone and west of the Mississippi, they could use another pro to really step in and get that going. And uh, you know, that's where I'd like to be is west of the Mississippi, especially out west. Um, and that's where you're going to be seeing me more and more. But yeah, uh, so I don't know if that's kind of feel. feel no, that's in. exactly what I was trying to get out. I, I, you know, I know that that's kind of what your, you know, your direction is that you want to head to. And I, I think you're exactly right. I think in the Midwest and out on the West Coast. Uh, you know, we need another, you know, young shooting dog pro. Uh, uh it's, well, I'm young. <laughs> yeah, no, you believe it or not, you are. So, um, and that's and it's important. It's important that we know. So, if you've got, uh, you know, so if you're if you're watching this and and you're thinking, hey, geez, I'd really, I'd I'd like to move, you know, some dogs up into that shooting dog circuit, and it's it's sometimes it's tough to find find a place to go with them, and 
uh, I think Brian's, a, you know, would be a great, a great choice. So yeah, and I, um, you know, and I don't want to scare my Beastle people either. I want to make no. sure they understand. I still go to all the Beastle championships, um, you know. But that's the thing, and this is how I got started in the American Field Open Shooting Dog Circuit was that the Beastles right now we really only have about five championships a year. Um, so it was like I got five big events. Other than that, I was going to either weekend trials or championships, you know, and. Yeah. With only it's not you know I know like Dan for example in the short hair world they have so many short hair championships a year that he's just he barely goes to any weekend trials just because he can go to a, a short hair championship every weekend pretty much and that's just not an option for a Vishal guy um, and like for the reasons I said earlier you know I just uh, found that you know I've worked really hard to get these dogs as good as they are and to find the good ones and to build them and build them and build them. And I don't want to take them to a weekend trial where I feel like I got to have a ton of fines or I got to try to run them at 60% or something, you know, half throttle. That doesn't excite me. The point about training these dogs and finding the best dogs and field trials, in my mind, is finding the best animals. And when I go to a championship or a nationals or a field trial, I want to run my best dogs, pedal to the metal, let them roll. Let's show what they're capable of and show them off. I mean, that's what excites me. Uh, going somewhere where I think I got to run them half is i don't know it just doesn't do it for me so yeah but I, you know i definitely plan to still go to the beachla championships i've got a great bunch of strong string of beachlas and uh and i just but i have room to add some white dogs you know and i can have and there's gonna be a lot of dogs events i go to uh where they can all run and from the events i've went to the last few years i've seen that uh my best beachlas they can compete with uh with anyone so uh it's not the old days anymore where we see a shorter in the parking lot and we panic, you know, it's like we can go run in the open American field open championships and be competitive. And uh, that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, I think that that says a lot about, you know, what you've developed. And I think that there's a lot of that, you know, it shows for the breed, right? Um, the longer you can spend uh, training on the prairie, training in the big country, training on wild birds and, and competing at that one hour, uh, in those one hour stakes, I think the breed just continues to evolve too, right? It just yep. continues to get, and, and I guess I'm going to say continues to get better. And some people might say that, you know, it changes, but maybe they don't think it's getting better, but, but that's what I think, right? I mean, well, and, and I, you would, I hear it from some of the old school guys, you know, I hear, Oh, the beach was supposed to be a gentleman's hunting dog, you know? Right. And I'm like, well, I don't know. I know what excites me. And uh, exactly. I know what I like to watch run. And, you know, I kind of equate it to, you know, when you look at the old guys and they're like talking about music, they're like, oh, that's not music. That's noise, you know? And the new generation is like, no, this is it, you know? And it's like, I, it's like kind of keep up with the times or you're going to get left behind, you know, because I see what the best beach are doing and how they're running. And, uh, I mean, I've been watching it since I was 12 years old, so I've seen it. And, I mean, I routinely hear it from judges, too. Uh, you know, we get guys from the pointer world or other breeds come to judge some of our championships, and, you know, they ask for comments. And we hear it a lot at our visual events that out of all the breeds, you know, these guys seem to think that our breed has come the furthest in the last few years, really improving, you know. Um, yeah. So it's an exciting time to be running Red Dogs. Um, but a lot of that is really the breeding. I mean, we've got – I mean, it's – a lot of it is, I mean, it's like I said before, where I take them. Uh, they wouldn't run like they do. If they didn't go to North Dakota or New Mexico, my dogs would be totally different. But if I didn't have good dogs, it wouldn't matter, you know. And right. The breeding program has really come a long ways. I mean, our dogs, not all of our dogs are awesome, but our best dogs are awesome. And our best dog can run with anybody. Um, and I couldn't say that a bunch of years ago. Yeah. So. Oh, that's great. It's great to know. Hey, we got a question here. I'm going to throw it up. Robert Meyer says, uh, what's the age of the oldest dog that you're running? Well, it's probably red now. Red and Bam Bam, they're seven. Uh, we're just turning eight. Uh, so they still got a co another year or two good years left in them. We'll see, you know, depending on how they do. Um, yeah. And Guy just retired. He was nine, I think, when he retired. But, I mean, he ended his career. Uh, he won the American Field National Championship and won two Open Championships in his last season uh, running I talk about going out, uh, walking away, bang. Sunset, you know, uh, yep. on top. He did. He had the dream finish. So, yeah, uh, no, no, that's great. 
Um, when do you, I was thinking when you were talking about uh, coming up to the prairie, when do you get to North Dakota? I generally get up there around 10th of July, mid July. Um, in the first couple of weeks, um, I don't do any running. You know, the first few weeks, you got to deal with spear grass. Um, I've been going up there enough now. I know where spear grass pat where the spear grass patches are. Dan and I do routine drives and go and monitor that and watch, wait for the seeds to drop. Uh, but you know, the first few weeks, I'm doing roading, uh, getting the dogs in shape, using the four wheeler, taking them, building them up to our shape. Uh, a lot of my dogs have been on vacation, especially with this COVID. But generally, even I run through May, they get June off. So when I bring them back in July, I get them roading. I like to get them as close to our shape as I can when I start running so that um, they, they're they they're ready to really run for an hour, you know, so I get the most out of my training when I, when I cut them loose on the wild birds. I'm not spending the first week having them run for 30 minutes and then be tired for the second 30 and slowly build, you know. And I'm doing a lot – I do a lot of yard work, um, just getting dogs broke, you know, working with the green broke dogs or puppies, doing stuff with pigeons and launcher, launchers, acclimation, all that kind of stuff, garment acclimation. And just all the basic stuff, so just getting the camp set up. It's a lot of work. Uh, yep. Just get everything set up. But generally around August 1st, uh, July 30th, July 30th, which is my birthday. It's a couple of years we've started then. But most years around August 1st, we start. Um, and then it's every day. I mean, there's no days off uh, unless it's raining or horrible weather. But it doesn't happen very often. We train every day. And it's, yeah. uh, you know, I run, I run four-hour braces every morning uh on the wild birds and you know that generally takes me to one or so uh but between the travel time and everything we get back to camp and uh have lunch relax a little bit and then in the afternoons and evenings we'll get out and we've got a yard area to train in i've got some pigeon coop i've got two of those phantom quail kennels uh built you know johnny houses yep. that we use with quail and chucker um so it gives me in the afternoons i can do any kind of situational work that a dog may need um, to supplement their wild bird training, but don't get the, the heart, the meat of the camp is the wild bird running in the morning. Uh, yeah. but it makes for fun days. Uh, a lot of birds. Well, let's talk a little bit about, uh, you talk about road and how much, you know, tell us a little bit about your roading program. Do you road a lot? I mean, is it a, at that time of the year, obviously you start running them quite a bit. Um, and then, and then, uh, nutrition, I'm going to just kind of, throw this up here real real quick if i can this was something we all saw here recently at least the prina the prina feeders right you guys you were yep. on uh, a bit nice article in the today's breeder uh did a real nice job and uh, that was kind of fun to watch fun to read um so obviously you're feeding feeding pro plan um yep. give us give us I a little my whole, the whole time i've been a pro nothing but purina okay any supplements along with the with the food, or is the food not really? Um, in, you know, when I'm at summer camp and I'm working the dogs a lot on heavy work rotation, I do use Glyco Charge, um, which is a supplement. Uh, I give them right after they run. It helps restore the glycogen levels in their muscles. Uh, and I've been using Dan and I have both been using that for years uh, with great results. My dad used it back in the day. It's just something I've always used um, on my dogs when they're working hard and I, I i believe in it i don't even know anything other than it so uh but that's basically it i give my other i give my older dogs too i've got uh i can't think of the name of it right now it's a joint supplement i give to some of their food with my older dogs just to help them with their joints uh but i'm just spacing the name of that right now uh, yeah so uh i know i know in the winter we were talking to something you kind of thought of when when you're talking about your winter, you get to camp. Uh, any thoughts of ever, uh, well, ever is a really long time, but uh, of going to uh, like the national shooting open shooting dog championship in, well, you know, in the pine woods. I think qualified for it. Yep, you, uh, have, you do. Yeah. Still is qualified probably. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just been a hard trip for me uh, in the past because, you know, it runs, where does that run in Mississippi or it runs, I don't yep. I can't remember uh, exactly. But I'm out in New Mexico training. It's in Alabama, but yep. It's a, I think it's probably a big difference in uh, the type of ground. Yeah. And, you know, honestly, the one year when Guy was qualified, uh, I was like, I can 
Ron, do you want? Does Ron want to pay for me to travel all the way there uh, to run the one dog and pay that entry fee, or I could go to the Arizona Open Shooting Dog Championship and ran at the same time, run the whole string, and it was a much shorter drive. Um, it's not something I would say no to. I mean, I'd love to right. go to it, and I've had dogs. Oh, froze up a little bit there. Hopefully, Brian comes back quickly. Um, we'll see what happens here. Did I lose you there? No. Oh, yeah, you froze My up on us a little out. bit. I'm not sure. Yep. Give me one second here. I'm going to take you off and put you back oh. in. You there? My back? Yep, you're back. <laughs> you froze up you for just a second. difficulties? Just minor. So, that, yeah, that's why, I mean, uh, I understand I it. For that, a while. Uh, yep. No, you're good. Um, no, I understand that it's a, it's a long trip and it's an odd time of the year for you based on where you're at, um, to head, well, to head. To, not something like going forward in the future, uh, that's not something I would say no to, you know? Yeah. Uh, it, you know, it's definitely something that I would love to get to. I was, I mean, I know the owners, even the dogs that qualify, the owners were pretty tickled to see, you know, a red dog qualified for that. Um, right. Yeah. So hopefully that's somewhere I will be in the future. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I think, I think that's, well, I think you'd love to be there, right? I think it's a neat place. Well, or, you know, and, and maybe the next, maybe the next step is getting qualified for the invitational and, and, you know, that's obviously a little closer, maybe a little bit, a little bit more, you know, the country you're used to running. It's in Arkansas, but um, it's different than being in the Piney Woods, of course. So. Yeah. And I've been to Georgia a couple times, you know, but uh my dogs, I mean, I, they've been around the country a lot, so they're pretty good at adapting to different stuff, but that would definitely be something new to them. They're definitely, I definitely spend more time in the prairie and Western, you know, big open Western open country. Uh, yep. I spend more time training on, uh, I like to be able to see them too. You know, sometimes I've went South or East. It seems like the further East I go, the fields get a little smaller and tighter, harder to see the dogs. The further West I go, the more open it is, the more you can watch them roll around and, I like seeing them turn into a little dot, you know, out on far right. out on the outside. Uh, but to each their own. Uh, I just, I just, you know, I like it where I like it out west a lot. It's beautiful. Let's talk about a few things you've seen over the years. I, you know, obviously you've you've had uh, some dogs do some pretty good jobs. Um, tell me about a, a a dog or two that you've seen of other people that have ran over the years that have done a great job that have kind of stood out to you. Well, Any you breed. know. In the visual world, uh, I've had, you know, some really good competition over the years with the Bells, Jarrett and Allison Bell. Uh, they live in by in Missouri. Um, and, you know, we bought heads a lot competition-wise, you know. Um, they've had dogs named Bullet and Kimber. And if you look at their titles, you know, they've won a lot. If one of the dogs of mine didn't string didn't win, there's a pretty good chance one of their dogs did. Um, so they've been they've been real good. Um, you know, we've got several people in our breed, too, with some really nice dogs. But as far as success at the national level, um, they're probably up there at the top, you know, with the amateurs. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I'm kind of having a hard time just coming up with a bunch of no, names. That's you know, okay. Dan, I get to watch Dan's dogs, Short Hairs Run. Uh, you know, they're, he's got some really special dogs that have won a lot. Um and I get to watch them run all summer. Uh, so there, he's got some good ones. And, you know, and the more and more I travel around, I get to see some good dogs. There's yep. no doubt about it. I've enjoyed watching that bolt run uh, when Sean runs him. Um, I really just like his athleticism, the way he moves. Uh, you know, I watched him run around in circle. And the gait, you know, it was just effortless. And it kind of reminded right. me of Guy. You know, it's like, that's, I think, one of the reasons why they win so much is they move so efficiently that they can just go for an hour and it's not, doesn't cause them the effort and the work. It does some of these other dogs that don't move as well, you know? And yep. uh, so that's just one. That's why I was excited to get this Earl dog. It was out of Bolt and Root, uh, hoping that I could get one to move around like I saw Bolt move around. You know, I just really was impressed with his mechanics and his movement and his speed. Uh, yeah. No, that, yeah, that's good. So uh, speaking of the fall, uh, I know you go, uh, you're going to go to circle for sure. Any thoughts of going to, I'm sure Bill Stapleton's probably been bending your ear going to Buena Vista in Wisconsin. Which one? 
in Buena Vista, the National Prairie Chicken Shooting Dog Championship? No, I, I don't know if I'm going to make it up there. I do. I mean, I've got a pretty full schedule. Uh, I plan to go to Circle, and then I've got a Vichel Championship in Iowa. But then oh. I'll go straight from there to American Falls and run in the Idaho Open Shooting Dog Championship. And then I'm going to head up to Payette and run in the Northwest Chucker Open Shooting Dog Championship. Um, and then there's another Vichel Championship that should be running right after that in Utah. Um, and then I've got, I, I generally run in the Southwest and try to get to the Southwest Missouri open shoot dog championship in Grove spring. Um, I think there's one in Oregon. I might be able to fit in. I got to see how that fits in the day. And then I've got another visa championship in Illinois, a uh, quail championship. And then I should head down to Texas for the Texas, uh, oh, open Texas. dog and their Lone Star classic. Um, and I've got a few weekends in there that are open. I'm going to try to find something to fit in there. But at least for now, those are the events I know I'm going to, which is sounds. I mean, I'm pretty excited about it. That's like eight or nine really nice events. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's uh, a that's a handful. Get yep, around a, a little bit. It should be fun. Yep. No, that'll be good. Uh, anything? Anything else that you want to add? Anything? Anything you'd like to share with everybody out before we uh, start wrapping up? Tonight? Oh, I don't know. You know, I had a couple. One of my owners talk to me about. Uh, you know, just talking a little bit about technology, you know, or social media and stuff and just that I really do like to use it. You know, I know I hear from some owners, you know, dogs go and they don't ever hear what's happening to them or what they're doing. Um, and, you know, it's something I try to really be conscious of and aware of. And I think if you go and take a look at my Facebook page and scroll through it, um, you're going to see that I try to do a really good job to keep my owners up to date, you know, whether I'm traveling or training competing you know what's going on where are we what are we doing you know and in, in uh, summer camp i've got a youtube youtube page i use at summer camp uh that i put up i wear a gopro at summer camp i think it's fun to catch uh, wild bird videos so i'm always out there the stupid thing strapped on top of my head mm -hmm. uh trying to get videos but i think it's fun to share them and i never realized how awesome uh short tail grouse were until i started going to summer camp oh, you know, I had no idea and uh, they are just my favorite bird. I love them. Uh, yeah, me so too. I know how many people don't know about them. So I think it's really fun to share the videos um, and uh, let people see what it's all about, you know, what we're doing up there. Um, but it's just, I mean, it doesn't matter to some people, but to some people I think that matters. And uh, I don't know. I just think it's amazing what I'm out there doing, you know. Uh, sometimes I get done. I'm, I train by myself a lot, you know, and I'll get off my horse and work some birds you know dan leaves summer camp earlier than i do because their short air championship starts sooner so i'm out there for a week or so by myself uh week 10 days two weeks and man you're out there in these just section of crp all by yourself riding up to two dogs standing on point get off your horse big covey gets up all around you and then you look around and you're like how incredible is this, this is just me and my horse and my dogs you know and you're like it's like it's been really fun to have that GoPro on and to share that uh, with people um, and let them see what's going on. Um, and I know I just assume as a owner, you know, it's fun to see your dog doing stuff. I, I don't always put everything on Facebook, but I like to send little videos to owners. You know, this dog's Rue and Remy I'm breaking now. Every few days I take a little video and send them to the owner and just show them what their dog's doing and making progress, you know, and just little things. And, uh, um, you know, I like to bring dogs in the house. These dogs to me are my family. Uh, they don't just sit in a kennel. Uh, they come in house with me. I bring two to three dogs every night in the house. They come in and I build, I bond with them. They sleep in bed with me. I rub their bellies. Um, I think it helps, you know, when I'm out running them, and that dog's 600, 800 yards way out there. And I tell them to turn. I like to think that, uh, that dog's like, Hey, I like that guy. You know, maybe I'll do that, you know, uh, yep. listen to him some, uh, at least in my mind, I think it helps. Um, Absolutely. Well, I, so those it, are just a couple other little things about me, you know, that are aside from the training um, and the, everything in the competition, just about me, you know, and like I said before, um, this isn't just like a job or what I do to make money. This is my life, you know, yeah. uh, I mean, I've shaped my whole life. Everything about what I do and where I go and everything I do is what's best for my dogs and what I can do to make them better and build my program 
and make champions. Um, and uh, I don't think every pro can say that, you know. Um, so that's something that I take pride in. Um, and I, hopefully from hearing me talk and seeing me, you can see uh, how much I do love it, you know. It's yeah. Just, it's like a job. You know, yeah, no, there's no hope. doubt. You you exude, you know, enthusiasm and, and obviously love the sport and love the, the bird dogs and, and love what you do. So that's a, yeah, it's awesome. You know, it's great to see. Um, and when we talk about that social media part, I think it's, I think it's big. I mean, I really do. I think there's a lot of people out there that really enjoy seeing it. I think they, I mean, I, I know it because I hear it. Uh, I think it's, I think it's important. So uh, well, definitely that's a nice that's touch. I've definitely had some husbands that told me it was easier to have the dog with me for their wife because they got to see updates and stuff. And right. I'm sure the husband appreciated it too, but I definitely know uh, that I've definitely heard that from a few of the husbands that the wife greatly appreciates uh, seeing their dogs. Cause I mean, I, I'm assuming most people are like this, but especially in the beach world, I know it's true um, that these beach owners really, really love their dogs. I and mean, they're like family members. Uh, you know, and uh, more so maybe than some other breeds. So I know that's a big deal. Some of my beach owners, that those dogs are getting some love. Um, yeah. No, no, so that's great. I know to do it. Yep. So what's the best way for people to get a hold of you? I'm sure they can get a hold of you through Facebook. Um, if someone has a question or uh, they they're looking for some some updates on what maybe they can, you know, maybe they have a dog they want to talk to you about. What's the best way best way for them to get a hold of you? Well, they can message me on Facebook, um, uh, friend me, message me on Facebook, or I have uh, my email is pretty simple. It's uh, I just changed my name. I used to be Beachy Gun Dogs when I started, you know, as a gun dog guy. Uh, but as I've developed, um, it just doesn't seem to fit really right now. And uh, with the new kennel and the ranch and everything in New Mexico, um, we're going to name that Red Mesa Kennel. Um, if you see the land where I'm at there, there's no, there's a little bit of an homage to the red dogs, but it's also red mesas everywhere out there. Um, so that's my kennel name now is red mesa kennel. And my email is red mesa kennel at gmail.com. So I think between Facebook or my email it shouldn't be too hard to get a hold of me. Um, you know, I've got, uh, you know, I've got probably six or seven spots, seven or eight spots left right now um, with me kind of transitioning a little bit more to the American field circuit, you know, more championships. I've lost a couple owners that I think were more focusing on the, the half hour stuff. Um, so it's left me a couple more openings than I'm used to. Normally, I haven't had to put an ad up for my summer camp for a couple of years. It's just full. Uh, but with this COVID going on and un people's jobs and uh, cha kind of changing where I'm going a little bit. Um, it's definitely left me with a few spots to fill. And uh, like I said, I've, if uh, you know, if you're looking to be on a competitive dog on a shooting dog circuit on west of the Mississippi uh, and wild bird stuff uh, in Idaho and Montana, um, I, I think I'm your guy. Yeah. Uh, well, that's awesome. Um, I think you've made a pretty good case for it. You've, you've had some success here in the past and, and I have no doubt that with the program you have, you're going to have some more in the future. So, uh, well, I hope so. that's the plan. Yeah. We draw well, up on the chalkboard. <laughs> that's exactly right. All right. Well, Hey everybody. You know, I think we're going to start, start wrapping up. Uh, and, uh, thank again, Brian, for, for joining me. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, make sure you guys, you know, share this and, and let us know what you think about the, about the broadcast. We've got some more great ones coming up in the future. Uh, this is uh, this is a good time. We're starting to get, you know, kind of excited about uh, guys will be heading north uh, not too long. You know, we're uh, middle of June and a uh, couple more weeks that we'll, the trucks will start pulling through through my town, uh, you know, heading, heading to camp. So uh, I can't wait to get back to normal. You know, I lost a whole field trial season. Yep. Uh, I've made a positive out of it. I've got a lot of stuff down at the ranch, but I'm ready to get back. I miss uh, running my dogs and competing. Uh, I miss yep. it. So I'm looking yeah. forward to just getting back to normal. Uh, so hopefully we can. With all getting back to normal. Yeah, getting up. back to normal is 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 uh, is a is a great goal right now. So uh, yeah. With well, that, I want to thank you for everything and appreciate oh. you giving me this opportunity to uh, talk with everyone. 
And uh, I think what Field Trial Central does is great. I try to recommend it to everybody, uh, you know, for keeping up with updates on what's going on as far as trainers, you get interviews, um, but also during the trial season, you know, to see what's going on and who's winning and who's placing. And uh, it's one of the first places I go and check and see to see what's happening. Um, so I just appreciate what you guys are doing too. So yeah, thank you. You, you know, I've kind of brought it up in the past and I'll, and I'll throw it out here again. And as the field trial season gets, gets going, um, you know, Brian kind of lost, we lost Brian there for a minute. Maybe he'll pop back in, but, but as, as the field trial season gets going, as we start seeing the trials get, get started, uh, I think I will, uh, you know, at least once a week, um, I mean, here, I'm going to let oh, Brian back in here. Hey, you're back. I don't know what happened. Yeah, you're back. Uh, well, so I was just, I was just saying, I, you know, you know, that my, the plan is, I think once this field trial season gets going, I think at least once a week, there'll be a, you know, a short kind of a solo, uh, broadcast with just results, right. Just kind of talk about who's doing what, uh, in, in every circuit that I can follow. Right. Uh, it's, it's tough to keep, keep up on, on everything, but it's pretty easy for me to keep track of, uh, you know, the open shooting dog guys, the all age guys, the grouse dog guys, you know, the major walking t trials and, you know, as much as I can on the short hairs and the, and the Vishla trials, um, and you know, and whatever else people kind of throw my way, you know, this is, uh, it's a sport I've been around a long time and, you know, I love to follow it and, and I don't get to, you know, get out and, and run around the country like you do, you know, anymore. So, um, but I do spend a lot of time following it. So, uh, that will be uh, probably Sunday evening type deal, uh, once a week. And once the, once the season gets off and running, so look forward to that in the future. Uh, so with that, I think I'm going to, uh, sign off for, for Bill Holton and Brian Gingrich and, uh, field trial central. Everybody have a great night. Thanks. All right. Good night. Everybody take care. <laughs>